Good evening everybody and a really really warm welcome to my regular Sunday night divorce recovery live here on my business page Caroline Strawson the divorce and breakup coach. So this evening we're going to be talking about healthy versus unhealthy relationships but before we get started as I know lots of you will be joining if you are watching live, please say hello and tell me where you're listening in from because I know, um, hi Sylvia, hi Kel, I know we've got lots of um, people listening in now from all over the world. Obviously I'm based here in the UK, but ultimately I know I get lots of people listening in from all over the world. So if you're listening in live, say hi where you're listening from. If you're watching on the replay, if you put a hashtag replay and where you're listening from, because again, I'd love to know the good times because I often pop on during the week as well. Evening, Rebecca. Just to say um, lots of different tips to help you overcome your divorce and your breakup um, as well. So if I know when lots of people are on, if you're watching on replay, then I'm going to be able to help serve you as much as I can. All of these Divorce Recovery Lives get uploaded onto my YouTube channel as well. So, oh wow, you're from Texas. Wow, I was actually in Dallas, actually, Sylvia, at the start of this year um, as well. So, um, and that was a, a, obviously a lot of fun. So yeah, if you want to go onto my YouTube channel as well, all of these are recorded. You can also see them within the page as well. What normally happens on my Divorce Recovery Live is I talk about relationships, divorce, um, breakups, all of the things that I know hopefully are going to help you keep moving forward because that's something I feel really passionate about is helping you not stay where you are and definitely not move backwards because ultimately this is all about you living the happiest life that you can and not staying stuck in those emotions. What happens is I normally pop into my private group afterwards which is called Divorce and Breakup Support Group for Women does what it says on the tin, where I understand that lots of people may have questions about the lives that I do, but perhaps they don't want to post them on the public page that is obviously my business page, because everything here is public. So if you don't want to post it on here, because I understand sometimes there's sensitivities around all of that, in my private group afterwards, I will be there to answer any other questions um, for those members of my group. If you're not in my private group and you want to be in the breakup and divorce support group, please comment below and I'll pop you a message with a link and we can get you in there and welcome you. We've got nearly 3,000 women in there now and it's a great vibe, very, very supportive. It's not a group for you to bash your ex. It's a group for you to share what you're going through. So as a community and myself, we can help you keep moving forward. Because ultimately, what's the point in staying where you are? Do you want to feel like this in 12 months? Do you want to feel like this in two years? And I'd hazard a guess, I hope the majority of you are going to say um, no to that as well. So today I'm going to be talking about healthy versus unhealthy relationships. And I always um, make notes before um, I do my divorce recovery lives because I want to make sure I get the right information to you so that you can really, really think about all the things that I'm talking about and take away some maybe light bulbs or things about your relationship right now, or maybe you're not in a relationship, but just to give you some ideas of what to look for moving forward. So obviously I'm a divorce and breakup coach. I'm a massive advocate of marriage. I'm remarried now. It doesn't mean that I go around wanting to make everybody go through a divorce. But what I'm really passionate about is that if you are in a marriage, you should be happy. And if you're not, how can we change that within your marriage? And if we can't, how can I coach you to leave, to move forward, and obviously to move on and find another relationship if you want or not if you want to? And I'll touch upon that actually um, through these the um, live this evening as well. So I'm going to go through seven tips to look for in a healthy relationship. So you might be watching right now, you may already be married, maybe you're in a relationship and some of these may resonate with you and if they do, please share them. If you want to ask any questions as they go, I will kind of try and answer them. If I don't answer them live, I will absolutely go in afterwards um, and have a look and try and help you out as best that I can as well. So I want to talk about seven tips. So these will be if you're in a relationship or when you are looking for a relationship because they will give you ideas of what you should be looking for to ensure that you are in that healthy relationship. So the first one is about you being whole as a person. And very often, if you've got two people that maybe aren't 
whole. So maybe you've been through something, maybe you've just come out of an abusive relationship, maybe you've had something happen in the past, maybe you've just had lots of bad experiences and you're kind of waiting for that one person to make everything okay again and you're not whole yourself. It's really important to have a healthy relationship and as a starting point to have 200% whole people. Because if you don't, what will happen is at some stage cracks will start to appear. And if you're not whole or they're not whole and you're trying to have a really solid, really good, healthy relationship, it's just not going to work because at some stage down the line, things will start to happen. And now, don't expect the other person to keep having to fill us up. You know, the biggest gift you can give yourself is to fill yourself up to make sure you are whole before you even go into a relationship. And I see this a lot with my clients. They think they are ready to go into a relationship, but they're not because they haven't rebuilt themselves. Now, I'm not saying that going on dating websites and going on some dates isn't going to boost your confidence. And again, I, I coach a lot of my clients on finding Mr. Right as opposed to Mr. Right now. And if you aren't whole and you aren't ready for that long-term relationship, it's still okay to go and have some dates, to have some fun, but it's you consciously knowing then that this is not going to be Mr. Right and you're in that just to boost your confidence, to have some fun, to have some company. You're not putting too much pressure because you're not in the whole place to make sure that you can build your relationship like that as well. And it's really important for you to recognize that, that you need to work on yourself before you go in. If you're going into a relationship and you're expecting them to fill you up, to make everything okay, you're already going to be setting yourself up for disaster because then what happens if they don't or what happens if they do a little bit but are not enough as to what you want the biggest gift you can give yourself is to be okay yourself to go into a relationship whole and lots of people say that relationships should be 50 50 and i categorically disagree with that a relationship a relationship should be 100 100 and it's so true, absolutely Catherine, I want you, I don't need you, and I say that about my second husband now, I want to be with him, I don't need to be with him, I'm financially independent, I have my own business, I don't need to be with him, I want to be, and that's an amazing place to be. When I look at my ex-husband, desperately unhappy in the latter years of my marriage, but I felt I needed to be with him because I was financially tied to him, and we've got children together, I was desperately unhappy. So if you can get yourself to a space where you want to be with someone as opposed to need to be with somebody, there's a huge difference. And then when you're going into a relationship, knowing that it's 100%, 100%, so you're coming in whole, they're coming in whole, the likelihood is you are more likely to have a really happy and healthy relationship. Of course you will have, you know, um, roller coasters along the way. We all do. Of course we do. You know, nobody's going to go in, you're never going to agree with everybody on everything, but that's good. And again, I'll talk about how you can manage that as you go along as well. You know, if you're going in and you need filling up, up or they do, what can happen is abuse, codependency, and these are the red flags then for you moving into a very unhealthy relationship. And obviously nobody wants to be in that. And this is particularly prevalent for those who've already been in maybe an abusive or codependent relationship that when they come out, if they rush into one and they haven't reset their boundaries, their core values and everything like that, they will attract the same people into their life. And that's why you very often can see cycles happening with relationships and people will often can go through abusive relationships, narcissistic relationships, codependent relationships, because they haven't reassessed and rebuilt themselves and, and all their scars and their healing after those relationships as well. And so it's really important when you come out of a relationship whether that be abusive or not, that you take the time to heal and recover yourself, to rebuild, to really think about those core values again, those boundaries, so that you go into your next relationship whole, that you're ready to give your 100% in the relationship too. So the second one, accept your partner for who they are. You know, ultimately, if you're coming into a relationship and you are a whole person right at the start, and they're coming in exactly the same, like I said, you're never going to agree on everything, and you wanting to change them 
that's not gonna help you have a healthy relationship. Now, I'm not saying you can't help them, you know, maybe they leave the toilet seat up, you know, yes, we can say all of that to them, absolutely. But ultimately, if you wanna change a core value, you know, something really to the core of your partner, then really, why are you with them in the first place? And this is really something for you to think about in a relationship. Maybe again, if you're in a relationship and you're trying to change, maybe something that really goes to the core and the soul of the person you're with, you know, that's them. Why do you want to change that? You know, because if you're going into a relationship and then you're thinking, well, okay, I maybe like this person 70%, but the other 30 I'm going to change, you're setting yourself up for having an unhealthy relationship at some stage. And it's really important for you to recognize that so that, you know what, you're never going to meet somebody that ticks every single box. And if you're waiting for that person, then you're probably going to be alone for the rest of your life. And you know what? It's not about you agreeing with every single thing that your partner says, but it's knowing how you can negotiate and argue effectively. And there's a big difference with that, you know, that you go into that knowing how to communicate, how to say these things, don't want to change them. Because ultimately, if you try and change them, then you're not going to show how authentic you are in that relationship because it's almost like you lied at the start then. You were saying everything is okay. Now we're in this relationship. Now I want to change this. Now I want to change that. So you really need to focus on, yeah, absolutely, nothing. And do you know what, Diane? I'm going to talk about um, being alone a little bit further on as well because it really ties in with everything that I am saying. And it's kind of um, so important for people to realise that it is okay to be on your own. And actually, it's vitally important to know you could be on your own if need be. And that goes hand in hand with a whole need to be and want to be in a relationship with somebody. So you know what? If you're going into a relationship with somebody... You know, don't go into it wanting to change them. If you've seen what their core values are, you need to love and respect your partner and their values because that's their choice. That's their thinking. That's deep into their core of what they believe in. And if you are in a healthy relationship with somebody, then it's really important to recognize that. If you are with a partner right now and they aren't respecting your values and what you stand for, even if they don't agree with it and they are constantly trying to change all of that, then that's a really unhealthy relationship and that will lead to arguments and conflict. And you know what? That over periods of time can be really, really draining, you know, particularly when you have children in the environment because you are their role models ultimately um, as well. So it's really learning to communicate effectively in that scenario. And I've always said, you know, it's healthy to argue, but you need to learn how to argue effectively so that you're not being all defensive um, with your partner. The third one is you actually need to understand what love actually is because I think a lot of us really get mixed up with what love is and we really need to make an effort with our love. It's so easy to fall in love with somebody because all of those emotions start to take over. You know what it's like when you first meet somebody, you can feel yourself falling in lust potentially because it's all of those emotions that are going through the body and then we make that conscious choice to fall in love with that person we choose to do that now initially at the start of the relationship and you know I'm sure many of you watching um, can remember maybe your first love or how you felt you know some of you may still be with your first love some of you may remember maybe you got married to your first love maybe you've divorced you know and again I'd love to hear you know those of you um what it was like that you felt when you were falling in love, those initial stages at the start, because what a wonderful feeling. You've got your butterflies, haven't you? And it's a really, really exciting time in your relationship and you feel madly, madly in love with your partner. But then what happens over time, you know? And you hear this a lot, I am I love you, but I'm not in love with you. And you know what? I agree with that to a point, but ultimately, if you're not in love with somebody, why is that? Are you putting in the effort as well? And I think that's really, really key in all of this, that again, it goes back to the number one, You've both got to be coming into this relationship whole. You've both got to have come in onto this relationship on this exactly the same page. Otherwise, you're setting yourself up um, for disaster. 
you know love is a choice of logic and reason so those initial stages of your relationship where it's all fresh and you're in love with them maybe then you settle into the kind of day-to-day -day, um maybe you move in together maybe you get married and then you kind of feel like maybe the excitement starts to go. But every day when you wake up in the morning, you are making that conscious choice to still love your partner, your husband, your wife, your boyfriend, your girlfriend. And you are making that conscious choice to do that. And with that conscious choice, you need to love them for their values on who they are without wanting to change them um, at all. And this is the basis of a really good relationship. You know, one of the best foundations I believe for a relationship is friendship. And whether you're in a relationship like now, maybe you're in a marriage um, or not, I want you to think about, um, are you friends with the person that you are with? I know my second husband now, he is my best friend. And I know I could talk to him about anything. I may disagree with what he says, which I do often, as does he with me, but I respect his feelings, I respect his opinion, because he says some things, and I totally disagree with this, and I'll give you an, a, just a really, really funny example, I'm very anti-dairy, he's really pro-dairy, because he grew up with a cow in his garden, okay, now we have quite heated debates about dairy and, and I tell him about the effects on your body etc and he's the opposite he thinks it's the elixir of life but we know how to argue we know how to communicate effectively I totally believe in what I am saying just as he does but we don't need to get defensive in the process because ultimately I love him and I respect him so that I know we can have that discussion and it's not going to be a case of well this is what I think and I'm not now speaking to you for the next week. If you are in a relationship where you can't communicate effectively like that where there's you know the respect isn't there and maybe there's silent treatment maybe there's um shouting, um, maybe they are forcing their opinion onto you. These are all huge red flags to me in an unhealthy relationship. So you really need to think about if you're going into a relationship or you're in that kind of relationship, you really need to think about, um, you know, sitting with your partner and talking to them about how you need to effectively communicate with each other without one of you feeling like maybe you're defensive about it. You should both be able to go into a discussion or a conversation without feeling like you're going into battle or anything. So I believe the basis of any long-term relationship is that you must be friends, you know, because if you got a great friendship then you've got a fantastic foundation for a really healthy relationship moving forward the fourth one I think is a really really key one and it's something I talk to my clients a lot about um, and I've got a, a group like I mentioned with nearly 3,000 women in as well and this is actually you taking responsibility for your own feelings when you're going through a divorce or a breakup, we go through what is called the grieving cycle, or I call it the healing cycle, because I think it has a, a more positive um, connotation to it. Now, part of that healing cycle is anger. And I know certainly for me, I was probably stuck in that phase out of the five phases, probably the longest out of all of them, because I felt really angry at my ex-partner for what he did and, and how I was left with no money and everything else. So I really, really was really, really stuck in that phase. And I was giving responsibility of my healing, it really, to him or somebody else. So I was kind of sat there either waiting for him to apologise or tell me, you know, he was so, so sorry and, you know, acknowledge his behaviour. So I was waiting for that. Or I was kind of then thinking, well, maybe someone else is going to come in and rescue me. Maybe my knight in shining armour on that white horse is going to come in and rescue me. You can tell I was brought up on Ladybird books, can't you, with Once Upon a Times. So I was almost putting my healing, my recovery, me moving forward in somebody else's hands. And I see this a lot. I see this a lot with the ladies in my group who are really, really stuck in this anger phase. They are giving their ex-partners so much power in their hands of their healing. They want them to behave like this or behave like that or say sorry or to acknowledge what they have done. And in doing so, they think then they're going to be able to heal. Now, many people, including myself, if I was still waiting for that, 
well, I'd still be waiting because it would never ever happen. So I was giving the power of responsibility of my own healing and recovery at that stage to somebody else. And it's really vitally important that you take responsibility for you and your feelings. Let's take this in a relationship connotation um, and a scenario. So you're with your husband, your wife, your partner, and maybe you're having an argument, okay? And ultimately, maybe they are totally disagreeing with what you are saying. Now, you then have a choice how you react to that. So let's say you totally disagree with what they are saying, you know, really to the core of you, you don't agree. And what I would say to you is take responsibility and ownership of that. It's your choice then whether to carry it on. So if you don't agree with them, you can then choose to not speak to them for a day, maybe be all huffy with them, you know, stomp around, really make it known that you are not happy. And then you want them to make you feel better about it. You want them to apologise because maybe their opinion you just don't agree with, but you want them to apologise for that or change their opinion because you're not loving and respecting the fact that that's what they've got. All of these are huge red flags for an unhealthy relationship. You are in control of your feelings, your responses, your actions. So if you are in a healthy relationship, then you can choose because you love and respect the person and you know what they're saying. It's not because they're saying it to be mean or horrible. They might just believe in that. It might be just... um, you know, something that they have been brought up like, or it might be one of their values, their personality traits that you can't change. And they're not being doing it to be mean or horrible because they love and respect you. And if that is vice versa, regardless of what they say to you, they're always coming from a place of love. They're always coming from a place of respect for you. So you can, you should be able to choose not to carry that on then as well but you are in control of this. And I see this, you know, in relationships um, going on right now, where you're putting the responsibility on your partner for how you feel. You know, if you're cross at your partner and you still feel cross after two, three, four hours, well, that's your choice to carry on feeling angry. It's your choice to carry on feeling cross. You don't have to. It's not going to change those three or four hours. It's not going to change anything other than the fact that you feel pretty rubbish in yourself and again these are all signs for an unhealthy relationship because you should be able to communicate effectively so that then you can choose to think you know what I don't agree with what he or she says but I know they're coming from a place of love so we can move forward because remember you're not going to agree on absolutely everything If you are in an unhealthy relationship and you are finding that you are wanting that other person to make everything okay, these are massive red flags to me. Firstly, I'd be wanting to know why you are feeling like this. Did you feel like this at the start? Has it been a progression in the relationship because maybe there's been some red flags that have been along the way? Or is this just something that you didn't come into the relationship whole? So you are always putting pressure on your partner all the time to make everything okay all the time. That's a huge amount of pressure you're going to be putting on them, you know, because ultimately if this is your life, your choice. And this is one of the things I try and coach and get across to all of my clients is these are your choices that you make. You can choose to stay angry or you can choose not to. And sometimes this is really hard. And, you know, I think because I've obviously... Um, been looking into this for so many years now and studying on positive psychology and my divorce coaching and I realize even now sometimes arguing with what say I've had an argument with my husband and and I sit there and it's almost like I'm having a, a conversation with myself and I think god I'm not happy with what he just said you know or it's something that I can feel that I'm getting cross about now I can choose then to not speak to him I can choose to sit there in a rage or I can choose to shout at him and try and change his mind or think that I've got to put my point across and try and change his mind and and all of that. Or I can choose not to. And it really is as simple as that. And I've often found myself sometimes thinking, maybe an hour later and I'm still feeling a little bit cross, actually putting myself in check and thinking, why are you feeling like this, Caroline? You know, why? Because, you you know, yes, you don't agree on X, Y, Z, 
but I can choose to sit here all afternoon like this or just choose to let it go you know because actually me carrying on that for the next hour two hours three hours five hours overnight is not going to achieve anything if you've got somebody who's consistently ignoring you if you are trying to get your point of view across and they're not respecting it and this is happening on an ongoing basis and then they are giving you the silent treatment on a continual basis and leaving you anxious these are all red flags for emotional abuse so there's lots of things that obviously to be looking out for but you can make a conscious decision whether to carry on that anger or not, as can your partner. And if you can both learn together that because you've built up that friendship, you've built up that solid foundation of love and respect and you are working on that because it is a conscious choice, obviously on a daily basis, to really, really be in love, stay in love and, and keep moving forward. If you know that in that relationship then that you love and respect them, you can make that conscious choice when you don't agree to move forward because don't give the power to somebody else with how you feel it's not up to anybody else in your life to make you feel okay you know that why should they why is that their responsibility your life your responsibility stop giving the power of how you feel to somebody else can anyone relate to that? Let me know if you can relate. Maybe let me know and be really honest here because I, I'm honest. I, I've done that. I've put on other people to make me feel better in a relationship as well. And then if they didn't, I've been cross at them for not making me feel better. I mean, really, that's quite a selfish act from my perspective when I've been in past relationships like that. And I'd love to know if anyone else does that. You know, do you sometimes, if you're feeling something maybe something's happened at work maybe something's happened in your life that you want that other person your partner to make you feel better you know it's almost like then if they don't you're even more angry about the situation in the first place because you think you know maybe they should be the ones that make you feel better you know please tell me i'm not the only one um in that scenario what happens if um, you don't do that effectively you start to blame each other and the moment you start and blame starts to come into your relationship it just can go downhill and it can become unhealthy and you get that kind of you know loggerheads um, as well so yeah you had no empathy for my situation so yeah and, and in that scenario um, as well Rebecca then you know I would say to you, if he hasn't got empathy for you, take responsibility, take ownership of that. And it's up to you how you react to all of that. And I know I did a video last week about empaths and I'd really recommend you going and watching. I don't know whether you've watched it um, as well, because there are, again, there's lots of key traits with all of that as to why we keep going back to trying to fix things um, as well. That's not a healthy relationship either. So it's working on ourselves as an empath to know our own values and our own boundaries um, as well. Brilliant. Oh, I'm glad you watched it um, as well. So you really need to learn to respect the other person's feelings. They are an individual in their own right. It's not down to them to make us feel better. It's down to us to make us feel better. And if you are watching and you have children, the biggest gift you can give your children is to help them recognise that they are in control of their life they have the power in their hands of how their life continues and their choices in their reactions and I'm always trying to teach my children this you know and because I, I think it's an incredible life skill for them that if they come home from school maybe they've had an argument maybe something's happened they can choose to carry that on for the rest of the night or they can choose to process it and move forward from it it's their choice in what they do, you know, and they can sit there and moan and groan, but that's not going to change the situation. So it's learning how we can move our emotions from that subconscious to conscious to then shift it and reframe how we think about situations um, as well. So it's really important that you take responsibility for how you feel. So the fifth one kind of goes into this one a little bit um, as well. Absolutely, Sylvia. You should be able um, to put you first and then the other point of view. Absolutely. So, the fifth one, honesty and respect. You know, this is a really key one. And again, we've kind of spoken a little bit about the respect aspect and the honesty and everything as well. But you don't need to get defensive when some people are saying, like your partner says something to you. You know, I know that they could be ways, maybe this, um, you know, maybe if they say something in a passive aggressive way or anything like that, that's a different scenario because these are red flags for abuse. So I'm talking now about if you're in a healthy relationship, 
you need to be honest with each other, you need to respect each other. And these are really two key qualities um, for that as well. Because in order to hear the honesty, you need to know that absolutely, regardless of what they say, it's always coming from that place of love. And that's what I said at the start. You know, sometimes my husband now has said things to me and I thought, cool, you know, but I know he's saying them from a place of love and vice versa. You know, I'm saying to him some things and, and sometimes I will sit him down and say, you know what? I'm saying these because I love you. I'm saying these things because I wanna help you. And some of them are quite hard for him to hear or for me to hear, but because we love each other and we respect each other, we know that even though it might hurt a little bit because it might, it's like you're on the same team. And there's a big difference with that because if you're in a relationship where whatever they say to you, you feel like you're almost there with your fists up, that like you're being defensive and you start blaming each other again, like we spoke about a few minutes ago, that's not a healthy relationship. So if you're in one like that, you need to really, really look at why is that happening? Why is it you feel then that if your partner says something, you go on the defensive? Or why is it if you say something, your partner immediately feels like you're in battle with them? That's tiring and it's draining your energy and it's not a sign of a healthy relationship for you. And this could be the same when you initially start dating maybe with somebody you've come out of your doors and you've started dating somebody and you feel like maybe you say something and um, to the, the person you're dating, but maybe they go a bit defensive and vice versa. And if that's happening, these are kind of red flags for unhealthy relationships. Obviously you can delve deeper, but again, this goes to the beginning. Are you whole coming into the relationship? Okay, so that's really interesting if that's you right now, you know, because you can really get into this pattern all of the time of whatever someone says, you feel like you're being defensive. And we often go into this cycle of feeling like that, that sometimes we almost forget what the person is saying because we just immediately assume they're gonna say something to get at us. So we immediately go into defense mode. And again, over a prolonged period of time, that's really tiring for you, tiring for them, and it's just gonna downscale with your relationship. And these are all signs of unhealthy relationships, but they can be fixed if both parties are willing to fully invest in making them better. And that's the key for both of you, fully invest in all of that um, as well. So you've both got to learn to stop being defensive. You know, I don't know whether any of you follow Jay Shetty at all. And he says, you know, the sign of a good marriage is, you know, not how much you get on with each other, but it's how effectively you can argue with each other. And I absolutely agree with that because you're not going to agree on everything, but you should be able to have a healthy debate or an argument with your partner without necessarily feeling like they're getting at you or they're, they're coming from a place where they're trying to make you upset, they're trying to make you angry, they're trying to lower your confidence. Because if that's the case, then obviously these are massive red flags to be looking for. But if you are in a constant state where you are feeling defensive all of the time, you need to stop. You need to stop and look at why there are things that you can do to help you move forward from that. But if it's continuing and, and they're not listening, then these are all red flags for an unhealthy relationship. And you need to ask yourself, remember to the last one, you are in control of you. So you have the choice here. You have the power to decide what you want to do in your relationship. However hard that is sometimes, and I do get that because I stayed in my last marriage for way too long because of finances and children, because in my wisdom at the time, I thought I was doing the right thing. But in hindsight, I absolutely know I wasn't because I was prepared to sacrifice my own happiness to what I thought was a healthy relationship in my marriage, which absolutely it wasn't. Uh, you know, and and being in that place for that prolonged period of time, life is precious and life is short, you know, as I'm sure many of us know. So ultimately, you know what? You need to look at, and if it isn't a healthy relationship, doesn't mean it's not salvageable, because you know what? Sometimes life and, you know, work and kids and tiredness, you know, life happens and we forget and we don't work on our relationship with each other. The sixth one is trust. Now, this is pretty self-explanatory. If you don't trust your partner, you're in an unhealthy relationship, uh, full stop. 
you know there there is no go beating around the bush here if you feel you don't trust your partner right now if you're in a marriage or relationship you are in an unhealthy relationship if you don't trust them because the questions you need to ask yourself is why don't you trust them and there could be a number of reasons here maybe they've cheated before maybe they've betrayed you before and maybe you are trying to make it work if you still don't trust them fully, I get it will take time and I do understand that. But if your partner is not making 100% effort to make you feel secure, to make you feel loved and secure in your relationship right now, then it is still an unhealthy relationship. Because why should you trust somebody if they have cheated and betrayed on you, if they are not fully 100% invested on making sure that every single thing that they do is fully focused with you in mind and making you feel like you can trust them again. And I see this a lot where people will go through a betrayal within their marriage and they want to make it work, as a lot of people do. I know I did initially as well. But the person who cheated needs to make the other person like a prince or a princess because they've broken that trust and it is really hard to get back. So they need to work, not just hard, but super hard and make the partner feel like they could look at their phone if need be, they could check their emails if need be, you know, that that line has been crossed, but then they need to show that if they want to make it work, they will do anything to make it work and get the trust back. Because if they are not doing that, then these are massive red flags. And when I look back to when my ex-husband initially betrayed me the first time, of course there were tears and there was sorry and everything else, absolutely, of course. But that was almost like a week later brushed under the carpet and it was back to how it was again because the apology had been made and everything else. But inside, I needed to be shown that I mattered. I needed to be shown all of this that, you know, because otherwise the trust would never come back. And actually, it never came back, you know, because it wasn't there. So again, if you are in a relationship or a marriage and, and if there's been cheating or betrayal and you're still feeling like that and your partner isn't making that effort, then you need to look at why not. You need to have a really, really good look. And could you go to relationship counselling? You know, are there things that you could be doing? And again, if they're not willing to go, what does that say about your relationship? You know, your partner needs to be fully invested in all of this for a relationship to work. You don't want to be half-hearted in a relationship. You'll die inside. And I know because I have been there. You know, I have been there where I've been dying inside like that and prepared to sacrifice my own happiness for that. Don't be that person. If you haven't got trust in a relationship, or maybe you're dating someone at the start and you don't feel like you trust in them, these are red flags. Trust is trust. If you don't trust them, either get out of the relationship or you need to look at reasons why. And if they're not fully invested in making you feel better about trusting them, then these are all flags and you need to really think about what's going on in your relationship. So the last one is make your relationship a priority. Now, this is sounds an easy one. Sounds like, well, of course we would. And when you first start a relationship, of course, that's what everybody does. You make it your priority, don't you? You want to see the person you're seeing like anything because you've got those butterflies and it's all really, really exciting. But again, life happens, doesn't it? And we forget. It's really important to make your partner a priority in your life. Now, that could be a date night once a week, once a month, whatever it is. Something you can both do together without the children. You know, and I hear people say, we can't, we've got kids. I, rubbish, you absolutely can make chance. You know, if those kids are in bed, have a picnic on your lounge floor, whatever it is, just so that your partner, your husband, your wife, they know and you can reconnect. Because the longer you don't keep doing that, the more distance that there is that going to be between you. And again, maybe you're just starting out in a relationship and you're wondering, is this going to work? Is it not? You need to make a priority for who you are seeing or dating. They need to know that they matter, you know, and then long term, you need to keep that continuing because if you want to keep the spark alive or you want to keep that relationship where they know that they matter and mean something to you, then you could take it in turns every month. There's so many things that you could do to make your partner feel like they still matter. 
because you know what it's like in this world. We are all super busy. You know, whether you've got children, whether you work, people are on their phones, you know, make a conscious effort to put your phones down, your tablets down. How often do you see dinner tables now and everyone's sat on their phone? Well, we're not allowed any phones in my house at the dinner table. You know, we want to have conversation and that's really, really important. So you need to make your partner an absolute priority. Um, you know, think about those times when you went, when you first met, you know, that excitement, that can come back. So if you're, you know, marriage is a bit stale at the moment, your relationship's a bit stale, you can work at getting all of that spark back. And it's really important. If you're in a marriage where your partner isn't interested and they're not willing to make you a priority, they're not willing to maybe go out for a meal or have a meal at home or watch a film together and hold hands or anything like that, you know, these are all signs of an unhealthy relationship because both of you matter equally in this relationship and you need to make that a priority. And also, you know, I see people say their children are as an excuse a lot of the time in all of this. Well, you need to reframe all of that because who do your children learn what a healthy relationship is? So if you're in a relationship where you make no time for each other, maybe you argue a lot, what are your children seeing? Because ultimately that's the kind of relationship that they think is normal. And that's the type of relationship that they will then go out and attract. And maybe if you think about it, the relationship you are now in, does it mirror the relationship your parents were in? Is there some similarities with all of that? You know, are you now in a situation where you feel like I've turned into my mom, I've turned into my dad, I'm in the same kind of relationship like that? You know, don't beat yourself up about it. It's really, really common because ultimately our parents are our role models in all of that, you know, and we do what we know. So I want you to really think about making your partner a priority because what you are going to be showing, particularly your children, is what a healthy relationship is. And that is a great gift that you are giving them. And, you know, if you kind of have to put them to bed early one night or get a babysitter or anything like that, you are showing them that the love between mummy and daddy or whoever is really, really important. And it's really important that the other person knows how much they mean to them. And that's a really, really important aspect of a healthy relationship. And you need to stop being self-centered in this scenario. You know, sometimes we often get to that, well, I'm waiting for them to do something. When they do something, I'll do something. And I've fallen into this as well, absolutely, where you kind of think, I've just done loads over the last few months. I'm not doing anything else. But you know what? If you are in this and it's a great, healthy relationship, just do it. The, if you ever notice the more you give in a relationship, the more you get back. And if you get to the stage where neither of you are giving, you're in an unhealthy relationship. So the more you give, the more you give back. And I know this with my husband now, the more I give to him, the more he loves it and the more he gives back to me. Little things, you know, a, a cuppa in the morning. And that's really important to keep doing all of those little things as well, you know, because those are little, and we, I call them languages of love, little languages of love like that, making a cup of tea for somebody, uh, running a bath, you know, it's, it's really, really important. So he was talking constantly. Okay, so, you know, ultimately, you both need to be on the same page in wanting the relationship to work and respecting each other, loving each other, knowing that if one of you says something, you're not saying that to be mean or nasty to your partner. Because if you have those feelings and they continue, you're in a really toxic relationship like that as well. This all goes back to at the start as well, why it's so important for two people that are whole to come into a relationship. Because again, if you're not whole coming into a relationship, then all of these things are just going to be continually um, bouncing against each other. Evening, Jen, lovely to see you. So it's really important that you are whole. So really everything starts with you. You need to know that if you are on your own, that you are okay with that. I know many of you will want to be in a relationship, but my advice is make sure you're okay 
in a relationship with yourself first and foremost, because then if you are, you are absolutely more likely to attract a healthy relationship because like attracts like. So if you're whole and you've worked on yourself and you've healed yourself, you've recovered yourself after maybe a, um, you know, a divorce or a breakup, you're coming from a place of balance and feeling whole. You're able to give yourself fully and you've got all of these strategies and tips that you know what to look for in a healthy relationship because ultimately if you're coming from a place where you're not whole and you're broken and you're expecting them to fix you and make it all okay and then you're in a relationship and you're arguing, do you really want to live your life like that? Because I see it so often where people fall into these relationships or they're still in a marriage like that and nobody's prepared to make the first move to make things better. And ultimately that means really lots and lots of unhappy people and you know i just want to help you live the happiest life that you can because we're only here for a short time you know and i don't want you to spend time like i did feeling really really rubbish and really at rock bottom so it's really important for you to look at what is a healthy versus an unhealthy um, relationship the more you do that, you get to know your own values, your own boundaries. So when you come into a relationship, then knowing your boundaries and your values and what to look for for a healthy relationship, like I've just explained, when these all come up and you think, mm, red flag, yep, yeah, no, nope, not the relationship for me, and you can move away. But if you're coming where you're not whole and you're wanting them all to rescue you, as the red flags start to come, you start to think, well, no, 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 that's, that's okay, I'll make that one all right. And so, you, Or you might have a couple of arguments and then it's okay. But that argument, they didn't respect you with what you were saying, but you'll let that go and you'll keep going. And all of a sudden you find yourself in a full-blown relationship with lots of red flags and it's an unhealthy one then you might get married and then you're going to be in the same scenario so it all starts with you you need to be happy in yourself you need to be happy either on your own so that you are ready to go into a relationship and recognize what is healthy what is unhealthy because you don't need to be with that person you want to be with that person. And that is two completely different things. You know, if you're sat there right now and you need to be in your marriage or you need to be in that relationship, I'd get you to ask yourself why, because you should want to be. I get if you're in a marriage like I was and it's the children or the finances or anything like that, come and join me in my private divorce and breakup support group for women and it's a safe environment for you to share because I understand if you're worried about money or finances, that's a key factor in all of that, you know. So if you want to come and join nearly 3,000 women, then obviously comment below and I'll get you added. I can send you the link so that you can come in there as well. So there's seven aspects of a healthy versus an unhealthy relationship. And I've kind of given you an examples of what a healthy one is and what an unhealthy one is. And that might relate to you right now, or maybe it's something that you can take away when you go into a relationship for you to remember what to look for as well. So remember, every Sunday night I do my Divorce Recovery Live, so I'll be back here again at 8 o'clock next Sunday. This, of course, will be downloaded and put on my YouTube channel so you can watch again. Please know that if you ever want to privately message me about anything, please do. If you're in my private group and you've got any questions about healthy, unhealthy relationships or indeed anything else, then obviously I will be in the group afterwards and I'm more than happy to answer all of those for you in a private setting. Thank you for watching. Um, I really hope these are all helping people with the divorce recovery lives. I know what it's like to hit rock bottom. I have been there. And ultimately, my goal is to try and make divorce a more positive experience for you whilst you're going through it, you know, because I know what it, it is like for you to try and get yourself to the state that if you go out dating again or you meet somebody else, you are in a much better position because you're happy in yourself. And that's my goal. I don't want to help you just bounce back. I want to help you bounce forward. And if divorce needs to be the catalyst for you to look at everything in your life, then you know what? That's a really positive thing to come out of it. If you're in a marriage right now and you're wondering whether to stay or go, I hope maybe listening to this video has given you some pointers as to 
what maybe is right, what maybe isn't, what maybe you could work on as well. Remember, I'm always at the end of Messenger as well. If you ever want to talk to me, talk to me about any of my one-to-one -one coaching um, as well. So I hope you all have a wonderful, wonderful week. I will see you again at eight o'clock next Sunday night on my business page, which is right here, Caroline Strawson, the Divorce and Breakup Coach. And I look forward to helping you more. So, and remember on my business page, hit um, see first, like and follow um, my page so that you get to see the videos um, as well. And if you know anybody who is maybe in an unhealthy relationship or they're unsure, please share it with them as well. You know, because ultimately I want to help people be in a healthy and happy relationship or if they're in an unhappy one, help them create a happy one within there or perhaps if it's the right thing to do, obviously to move forward because I want to help you be as happy as possible. So take care, have a fantastic week and I will catch up with you all again really, really soon.